right, right now I'm joined by Steven Seiler, who's going to be a part of Titan FC 37 here, live on UFC Fight Pass. He's going to get his second opportunity here to obtain Titan FC Gold. Steven, how is training camp going leading up here to the big fight? Uh, it's going good, man. I don't think I've felt this good in quite some time. Like, uh, body-wise, you know, the weight's coming off quick. Um... Just really, you know, I feel like I'm working hard for it, and I know it's going to pay off in the long run. Well, good deal, man. Like I said, man, this is going to be your second opportunity to get gold here for Titan FC. This time around, you're going to be facing the champion, Andre Harrison, a.k.a. Dre the Bull. Now, um, with Andre, you know, he kind of has that wrestler mauling style. Is that something that's kind of, I don't want to say annoying to train for or to know that you're going to be going against, but... You know, how is a fighter's m mindset when you know that that's really his style of fighting that he has? Um, you know, it just means I got to work that much harder. You know, I got to make sure if he does get me down or, you know, when he does get me down, I just got to get back up. You know, I, I know how talented of a wrestler he is. And I need to, you know, despite how good my ground game is and how many submissions, you know, wins I've had, um, I got to realize if it's not there, hurry up and get up and then, you know, force him to keep working and make him get tired. Now, one thing that you've been able to do, you're currently riding a five-fight win streak. You've got four submission wins out of that five. Uh, you know, your last loss was actually when you fought for the, the championship previously there at Titan FC. Uh, what's been clicking for you here over these last, you know, five wins? Because you've been on a tear here over the last year and a half. Yeah, you know, like, this is what I've been telling everyone here, man. I've been, I'm able to start having fun again because... Despite, despite what people think about fighters, you know, being rich and uh, making all this money in the UFC or not, we don't. <laughs> we don't make a lot of money. And so I was stressing out every, you know, before every fight, you know, whether or not I was going to make my bills. And, uh, you know, I finally, you know, settled down with what I could do. And, you know, I realized I should probably just get a part-time job. I started working, uh, you know, part-time just from home. I work, you know, just four hours in the morning before I go train. And then, uh, you know, that helps pay the bills. And, you know, now, hold on a sec. And now I'm able to make sure, uh, you know, when I fight, I don't got to worry about winning or losing fights. You know, the money's already there. So I can just go ahead and have fun with it. It's less of a business now. Is that something that, you know, that a lot of fighters, especially young fighters, don't realize, you know, until there may be a couple of fights in, that it doesn't come so quickly and you got to have somewhat of a plan B or a plan while you're still trying to pursue that dream. I mean, I, I had nine fights in the UFC, and, you know, I was still sweating out my bills before every fight, you know, hoping they were even call me back and give me another fight. And I went pretty quick, too. So, um, you know, you think you're getting all this money, and the tax season comes, you're giving half of it away. So it's not so fun after all. But, uh, you know, being able to, you know, have extra money on the side, you know, I'm able to take risks in fights where I'm like, oh, sh before I was like, oh, man, if I do this right now, he might take my back and choke me out. Well, now it's like, okay, if he does something, then he'll take my back. You know, if he gets me, he gets me. But hopefully I can get out and, you know, advance from there. Well, absolutely. Well, that's that's actually good to hear that uh, the fighter actually has a plan B and, and is working, and, and that's how they're keeping their head clear. Now, you're still a young man in this game. You actually celebrated a birthday here recently. But, you know, with all of us, when we have birthdays, you know, has it kind of crossed your mind how much longer I want to do this and – how much longer you want to stay in this wacky world of MMA is, like you said, it's it's not all glitz and glamour that a lot of fans think it is. No, uh, you know, I've always had a plan. Uh, once, you know, at first I didn't take fighting seriously. So I just kind of did it for fun. I thought it would only last like a year or two. Um, and then it just kept on lasting longer and longer. And the better I got and the more I fell in love with it. Um, but realistically, you know, my plan was to hit the 20-year mark. Of fighting, which would be you know April, and uh, when I'm 38 years old, so I wanted to hit the, the 20 year mark of fighting, um, or you know the 100 year 100 fight mark, so whatever comes first. Wow. Okay. Well. Wow, okay. Well, nothing wrong with that. I mean, you want to keep it going. I mean, you want to kind of be like the guys who are going to be fighting in Bellator uh, when they're in the 50s. I mean, that, that's crazy, but could you ever see any sort of scenario, like in all honesty, to where you could be late 40s, possibly even in your 50s, if you're cleared uh, through f from an athletic commission to where you would still want to fight if you still had that love and that passion. Um, at this point, 
No, I, I, I don't see me fighting in my 40s and 50s because I'm not even 30 yet, and I know uh, how bad my body feels every day. I can't imagine, you know, 10 years from now uh, how I'm going to feel. But at the same time, I didn't expect to be fighting, you know, when I'm 30, so uh, you never know. That, that's crazy. Now, uh, you know, you don't want to think too far ahead, but, you know, if you beat Andre, that's going to give you six fights in a row. You're going to have a title uh, attached with your name. You know, at what point are you going to start saying, okay, are you going to start sending the tweets out to the people of the UFC like, hey, look at me. I'm a champion. I've won some fights in a row. I put on good fights for you when I was there. Give me another look. Uh, when is that point going to come, or is it one of those things where you're just going to kind of take it fight by fight and just keep plugging away? No, nah, man, I'm bugging them already before the fight even <laughs> happened. You know, uh, you know, for a couple fights now, even before this one, after my last time fight, I told Shelby, hey, man, I'm getting it back. I'm ready. I'm more hungry than I've ever been. I've been canning it up lately. I just finished this guy who's on the ultimate fighter. Uh, I finished him in, what, a minute? Like, give me my chance, give me back to where I belong. And, you know, he's always just told me, just stay ready. My time's going to come. They're looking at me. And then, uh, you know, two more wins after that, including the title belt against one of the top prospects and, you know, out of the UFC, I think that will definitely do it for me. So your, your message to Andre here as we get uh, leading up here to Titan FC 37 here on March 4th. You know, I'm really looking forward, you know, to Andre. You know, I'm fighting him. It's going to be a fun fight. I've actually got to know him the last few Titan fights. He's been on the same card as me, and uh, we even cut weight together the very first Titan fight I was on. Um, I got to know Andre. got to like him, and it's going to be fun, man. I, got, I like, enjoy fighting people I get along with. It makes it more fun while I'm inside the cage. Uh, I'm just ready to scrap and make sure, uh, you know, hopefully he's ready for a war, too. And we, let's try to put on a show and show the UFC that we both can uh, put on a good fight and... You know, it's going to be my time. I'm going to bring home that belt, and hopefully he's there shortly after I am. Well, absolutely. Well, give a shout-out to the sponsors helping you get ready here for the big fight here on UFC Fight Pass. You know, I just want to thank, you know, everyone that's been there for me, my family, my friends. Um, you know, everyone that supports me. I don't really, I'm not really doing any sponsors. You know, Red Gear hooked me up some gear, you know, for, for this training camp, and I appreciate it. Um, but really, you know, the only person, you know, that's, you know, been there, you know, that's my gym. Uh, Core, Brock, and, you know, Ramsey and everyone that's been training with me to help me get ready for the fight. Well, absolutely. And let the fans know where they can keep tabs up with you here as you prepare here for the big fight. Uh, the best place is on my Twitter, at Steve Seiler. That's what I'm, you know, best on, that I pay attention to. Other than that, I'm not really good to the whole social media. <laughs> Let, let's let's keep it to the pros because we can see when people get on there who don't know what they're doing, it can get real nasty, real ugly. So, I respect that. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely. Well, we'll again, Stephen, you're going to be a part of Titan FC 37 Live UFC Fight Pass March 4th against Andre Harrison. Championship on the line. It's going to be a big fight, you know, bunch of title fights. It's going to be fun fight for the fans. Again, we appreciate you taking up the time, and best of luck here as we lead up to the big belt. Awesome. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you.